Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the DS1019 Plus for photographers. So many of you out there are buying this now because you're budding photographers and you either want just a backup device or something a little bit more important. Now the DS1019 is by no means the perfect photographer NAS. That's because it doesn't have 10 GBE, PCIe or 4 LAN ports. But as a backup source and particularly at this price range, it is phenomenal. And the SSD cache built into the bottom as well as the multitude of applications available on Synology's DSM 6.2 with 7.0 to come, it has never been a better time to learn about why a Synology DS1019 Plus could definitely be the great photo you know, server for you. They've got a number of apps and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So let's move over to the NAS and talk about photo photography, photos on a NAS and of course this NAS. Right, so here we are back on the DSM desktop on the DS1019 Plus. Now, photographers who are gonna utilize this NAS, as I've mentioned, because it's not 10 GBE, this isn't really a suitable NAS for photo editing if you're going to be using large raw files that surpass 25 meg. Same goes for if you're editing video as well. You can link aggregate across those two ports on the back of this device, but when it comes to photo archiving, photo backup, photo cataloging and photo retrieval, this is a great device. Now what we're going to talk about today is the three main apps that you're going to be utilizing in order to do this. Now, there are other means. You've obviously got the basic um, file station application, and this lets you sort of go through things on a folder by folder level. And once again, if you're an Android, iOS, Windows user, any of those sort of devices, you're gonna be very familiar with a structure like this. So for example, I uploaded just a simple album prior to the video beginning. This is just full of images here, and we randomly select one. This is a photo of, let's find out, hopefully it's decent. Here's a picture of just somewhere I went to in Cardiff, and again, very basic, you can open the folder uh, there and see the file. Once again, as mentioned in the previous video, you can of course set up a network drive to access the NAS remotely and therefore see all the folders and directories by creating a shared folder. So if you are using a proprietary software for editing, you know, at the low end, you've got things like um, paint.net uh, and stuff like that. And at the top end, you've got Photoshop, elements and stuff like that you can set up a network drive to access those photos remotely and do check out parts one and two of my video to talk you how through how to do that but if you want to utilize the Synology's own proprietary applications these are the three you're going to use namely drive moments and photo station now these three applications are kind of the main ways to deal with photo content as well as um, with uh, improved and much faster thumbnail generation. It also has an embedded AI component and deep, think uh, deep learning where you can catalog and retrieve photos in a much more user-friendly fashion. <clears throat> so let's go with the uh, least sophisticated of the three. We're gonna look at Synology Drive. Now Synology Drive, as I've mentioned in the other, in the other videos, it's their alternative to Google Drive and Dropbox. It's a one portal access point that also arrives in an iOS and Android application as well as a Windows client app that you can install on your PC where you can access the entire contents of the drive and open files, be they music, be they video or photos in, the, in a single interface. So again, if you, one of the great things people used about these third-party clouds, again, Google Drive and Dropbox, right there at the forefront, is that this one app opened all manner of files, and Drive gives you that versatility. And once again, we can open a file, and boom, that's that same file from earlier. So again, you're opening it within the user interface, and you can make your way back into it. And of course, from here, you can open all those other media types as well. And each of them will open in their own way, They'll either open in the browser like this, and I know you can't hear it on the screen right now, or you can download them to your local machine and open them up in your own way. And once again, a map network drive will give you that access. But what if you want something a little bit more tailored, a little bit more graphical? Well, the next stage up is Photo Station. Now again, these are from a trip uh, on a gaming expedition that I took in Cardiff with my brother. And again, all the, you can add all your albums and it will sequence them automatically. And it will also do tags as well as geotagging from information that you use. So say, for example, we want to look at that same photo from earlier. Here's our photo from earlier. 
and we can use a lot of the metadata that's in the background to find out more about the photo. We can also edit it using some of the software that's affiliated with this program, as well as utilizing your own programs if need be. Again, you can do all kinds of bits there. You can set it as the album cover. You can obviously download it and you can upload to existing third party platforms. On top of that, you can find out more information about the photo. And again, there's lots of information there about the location where you can add it manually, or there's the GPS information there and a huge pile of information that's embedded in the metadata of that photo. Let's close that photo down. Look at Robbie there with his bruised eye with his brother. Um, on top of that, there are other ways in which you can see your photos. So they've got other ones where you can see it as a map. And it, once again, if you've used, in my case, using the phone to take the pictures, a lot of this geotagging information will be in place. So there, for example, is the photos I took in Cardiff. There's ones that I've taken in Brighton. And there's ones I've taken up here in different locations. And it's recorded all that information in a mapped form. And again, you can go to a timeline form. It's a lovely application. And this is just a single um, album. Imagine this with all of your albums. So moving forward, we can go to the last one. And this is more of a cataloging tool for your photos on your DS1019+. And this is the one that uses deep learning. Because in this, you've got places where it's obviously used a great deal of the geotagging along with other stuff to find information. But on top of that, you've also got information on these two. And these are the two most important ones. This is where you can either tag people where it's recognized faces. So for example, this is a poster of Star Wars um, at one point, because I'm super cool. And it's recognized that this person is in three photos. Harrison, a young Harrison Ford from Star Wars. So if we say that that is, right, if we go back, that's not Harrod, that's Harrison Ford, that's good old Obi-Wan. So say for example, if we say that Obi, do you know what, we'll give him his full title. And now all of those pictures of him are tagged. So we go for me, who's this? We'll go for Robbie. And now he's sequence two. We'll go for him, that's, that's my bro Ian. Now if we go back and we want to search for something, so we want to search for Ian, it will now present us with all the photos of Ian. And that's how good it was. I managed to do with one tag all those pictures of him. Now say, this is now album that only had about 90 photos in for a test. Imagine you did one with 10,000 photos or an art, you know, decades of photos that you own. It will take a long time for the device to sequence them in this manner, but once it does, Tagging only has to be done once and it can bulk photos together. Obviously, if you look very different in photos, like me with my busted eye there, then things will differ. The last one is the really fun one, and this is called subjects. Now, obviously, there's not a lot of photos here to deal with, but with subjects, it has an algorithm where it identifies certain characteristics where I haven't done these labels. The system has labeled them itself. So it has looked at these pictures and with its deep learning algorithm has worked out that these were all food. And therefore it is tagged them food. So down there when I was eating um, a noodle mix with nuts, down here we've got a cat. That same picture of a cat has been identified in a different album as cat. Oh no, he hasn't been identified, but the, the principle still remains the same. And again, that level of detail and that intelligence there in the background is something that I genuinely love about this software. QNAP have got their own at the moment and I'm looking forward to comparing those later on. But nevertheless, this has been the best ways to handle photos on your DS1019+. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to support this channel and help me make more videos for you. I'll see you on the next video.